Bible says in John 14, and then you read 15 to 16, this was Jesus speaking. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. How long will he abide with you? I can't hear you. Then verse 16, that's verse 16. Now let's go quickly to 15, 26. The same book of John, 15, 26. Now I want to encourage you, if you want to get the fullness of what I'm teaching, this season, this period, I want you to go home and read John 14, John 15, and John 16. It's a basic uh, introduction even to the person of the Holy Spirit. All right? The Bible says, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father. So where will the Holy Spirit come from? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. He will testify of Jesus. So you can see the collaboration in the Godhead. The Father will send the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit is come, he will testify of the Christ. Can you see that? Can you see that collaboration? One is not without the other. The three of them are together even in one. Now, today, I want to speak to you on what I've titled who is the Holy Spirit? So this is like your basic 101 class on the person of the Holy Spirit. Look at him and say, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Father, thank you because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding today. As with simple souls, we've come to learn at your feet and make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. In Jesus' name, and amen. Can I live in amen? amen? Can I have a believing amen? amen? Hallelujah. All right. Who is the Holy Spirit? Can I begin by asking you that question? Who are you? Who are you? All right. So, so somebody will look at um, another person and say, they say, who is she? And then the person will say, she's a banker. <laughs> Another person will say, he's an architect. Oh, he's a tech guy. And you see, when you hear people say he's a tech guy, they are very happy. Because they feel there are levels to that. And they feel like that's the highest level. But that does not aptly describe the person. What they are actually saying is that that is what he does. That is not who he is. Do you understand what I just said? What you do is not who you are. Many times when we talk about the person of the Holy Spirit, uh, people actually describe the Holy Spirit by what he does, but that's not who he is. But again, what you do can also actually tell the kind of person you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, because I am uh, into tech, it can also tell you the kind of person, what my passion is, and that's why I'm in tech, you see? But it does not fully describe me, it only tells you a portion of me, which is also very correct. But many times what we do is that we take a part and we make it a whole. Therefore, you are not a tech person. Tech is just what you do. Aha. Uh -huh. So, he's a father, yes, but he's also a man. Glory to God. So that when you describe the Holy Spirit, uh, it takes getting the complete duty and the role of the Holy Spirit to completely be able to say this who he is. Somebody understand what I'm saying? So you can't take a part of him and run with it and say this is what the Holy Spirit is. No, sir. You have to understand the complete set of who he is in order to be... It is wisdom to know the God that you serve. Can I say to somebody again that it is wisdom to understand and know the dimensions of God? Why? Because without a proper knowledge of God, one cannot live in his fullness. Without the proper knowledge of God, you can't live in the fullness of his blessings. Many people are, are born in church, many people have been in church for a while, but they still do not live in the fullness of the blessings of God. Why? Because they do not know what is possible in God. If you do not know me as me, then you can't know what I can do. How many of us were in school and then you thought, or probably you were in service, you were in camp, and then you thought somebody was your level? Until one day their father came to visit them. And then they brought a car. And then you start saying, I didn't know they were this rich. <laughs> now, now you know. Why? Because <laughs> you saw a car and you know how much the car would cost. Her. So you know that she's not part of us. So she's just behaving like she's poor. She's not, she's not really poor. Why? Because you have not seen something about the person that makes the person better. Now listen to this. God was speaking in Isaiah chapter 1 and then verse 3. He said that the axe knows his owner. 
and he said, the donkey, the master screamer. He said, but my people do not know me. The ox knows his owners. The donkey is master screamer. But God was lamenting. God said, but my people do not know me. It therefore becomes difficult for God to walk in our life because we do not know him. It takes the knowledge of God to be able to appropriate the blessings of God. Can I say that somebody again? It takes the knowledge of God to be able to appropriate the blessings of God. Because what I do not know is possible in God, I cannot attain it. So it's, impo it's important. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18, he says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. It's important that every day, though you have been a believer for many years, your growth should also increase. You understand that? It's not just that, uh, uh, you know, uh, we go to church every Sunday, that, that's just it. No, no, sir. No, man, that's not enough. There is a need for you to grow daily in the knowledge of God. So can I ask you, is your knowledge of God better in 2023 than it was in 2022? Can I, can I, can I get an answer? And th that means you are growing. That, that's what, that makes God happy. That's one of the intentions of God for your life. Our spiritual places cannot be limited. It can be stunted. Understand that? Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24. God was saying what you should glory in. You know, we sang that song about glory. God was saying what you should glory in. He said, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Let not the wise man glory in his, in his wisdom. He said, let not the mighty glory even in his mightiness. He said, but let him that glory, glory in this, that he knows and understands the Lord. So that our glory, and you see, that's so strange. Because that's all we glory in nowadays. Even Christians don't learn to glory in the knowledge of God. Rather, you want to glory in your heartly possession. You want to say, oh, I thank God for my shoe, thank God for my bag. But Bible says, God, your father said, this is what you should glory. This should be the thing that should make you proud. This is the thing that, that you should actually gallivant about, your knowledge of God. Many people have several conceptions about God. Many people also have several conceptions and misconceptions about the person of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps the person of the Holy Spirit is the most misinterpreted personality in the whole of scriptures. Right? And so today we want to take that journey so that after now you will know what is possible in the Holy Spirit. I want to try to help you to know the Spirit better. Listen to this. The vitality of your work with God is dependent on your level of knowledge and understanding of Him. Your understanding of who God is will also determine how you relate with Him. If your God is just a consuming fire and it's not love, just a consuming fire, even the way you pray will be different. Because you won't want to get close to that fire. Is that not so? So what is God to you? And that's very key. Now, as I proceed, I remember I had a conversation last week with a young girl. And uh, she just lost her mother. And um, her father wanted her to be a mother. And I said, you've got to be mother because you're the first daughter. It's what you have to be. She said, um, I can't be a mother. I, I said, but you are it already. You are a mother already. She said, I need time to grow into this. I then ask her a simple question. What is the duty of a mother? You know, many things we think we are ready for or we are not ready for, we don't even understand what it means. Some people here say, I, I want to marry. What is a father? What does it mean to be called a husband? It's not to have a regular person you sleep with. That's not, that's not, that's not what it's about. What's the duty? I then ask her, you see, there are three primary roles a mother does in every life. A mother cares, a mother loves, and a mother nurtures. Those are the three basic things. You see, men cannot really nurture. All they want to do is provide. Provision is different from nurture. It takes a woman to nurture because it is in their system, it is in their being. The way they will care for you, even you to be asking yourself, ah, ah. so that if you expect a man to reciprocate your caring, there will be trouble because he's not wired for it. He sees white and black. You see gray. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's important that we understand what is the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer? Who is this person of the Holy Spirit? So that you can know what you can get for him. Why? Because the value of knowing the Holy Spirit is limitless. The value is limitless. Of knowing the Holy Spirit is limitless. Many of the abuses we see today in the body of Christ is because people really don't know who he is. I remember many years ago, and then I, I, my friend, I was having a chat with a, a man of God, my friend. And he was saying, you know, there's a revelation in our school. And I said, tell me about it. Tell me about that revelation. He said, it's about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
And you know, when you talk about the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you, you should be interested naturally. And I said, what is it about? And then he said, you know, they have come to this understanding, this new mystery. That it is the level of the viscosity of the oil you are anointed with that determines the power you work with. Do you understand that in physics? The level of viscosity, the, the, the viscosity of the oil will determine the power that you work with. So that when they want to anoint you, the viscosity of the oil must be hard. For people who didn't read science, that just means that a palm oil will have more energy than an olive oil. Because the thicker the oil, the better the oil. So people got to the level of revelation that they began to annoy themselves with palm oil. Truth. Truth. Because olive oil is one of the thinnest oil you can find. And so viscosity is not okay. For you to really walk in the high levels. And they began to say, you know, there was no olive oil when Babalola was anointed. Hallelujah. You see, people began to enter into realms that has no base in scriptures. Why is it that people are like that? Because we do not understand who the Holy Spirit is. So whatever they tell us about him, that's what we go about. That's how we go about it. Now, Jesus said, as it concerns the believer, John 14, 16 or 17, he said, and I'll pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. He said, the spirit of truth whom the word cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Can you see that? So it's not somebody we can explain to the word because it neither sees him Neither does the word knows him. So it takes, number one, being born again for me to tell you about the Holy Ghost. Because you can't understand what I'm talking about. You can't feel, you, you can't sense what I'm talking about. Now listen to what Jesus said. Because, because he neither sees him nor knows him. But listen, he said, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. <laughs> Can you look at your neighbor and say, but you know him. Is that what I said? Is that what I said? Answer now. I'm, I, I know sometimes I can intimidate you. You can think maybe he's going somewhere else. And the, so is the, which knowledge are we? Is that what I said? Is that what I said? So who said it? Thank you. People are in, hey, You see, I didn't say that. Jesus said that. He said, you know him. You know him. He didn't say, you will begin to know. He said, you know him. Why? Because the knowledge of the Holy Spirit is experiential. It's not book. It's not abstract. You know, that's one of the problems I had with science in Nigeria. They were teaching me chemistry and they would say, you mix calcium with this and you get this. And I asked them, where is the calcium? They said, they don't have it. I said, so I must assume, I just cram it. I said, that's a problem. And it was a big problem. So that when they said they were going to the laboratory, I didn't understand what they were going to do. Half of the things were not there. They said, Phos you get phosphorus. And I said, where is the nitrate? He said, just finished. What do, what do you mean finished? Where is the sulfur? And they said, meet sulfur, meet nitrate, and then you get this. I said, okay, let's mix it. Let's mix it. But they couldn't mix it. So that many Nigerians, that is why we don't produce many things. We are very, very brilliant. When you go to Harvard, you, you will beat them down. But if they tell you practicals, you will then begin to... Because you can quote. You have been taught to cram. You have been taught to quote. You know things. Many of the chemicals you have never seen before. In pharmacy, you know them. You know that this is the drug. You put this one, this one here. But you never see them before. Why? Because it is book knowledge. It is not experiential. But Jesus said a promise. Gave a promise as it concerns the person of the Holy Spirit. And what did he say? He said, you will know him. He said, you know him. Can somebody say, I know him? The way you're even saying, I know you don't know him. Say it loud, I know him. <laughs> Why is that so? Because how you know the spirit is how he reveals himself to you. No matter how much we quote scriptures and tell you the similarities in scriptures, understand that our dealings will be different. The way you hear from God is not the way I hear from God. And it will be different from the way the other person hears from God. So as he concerns hearing and the dealings of the Spirit, uh, it will be different. And that's why Jesus said you know him, because he will live in you. But as he concerns his person, his person can be taught. And that's why I want to teach his person today, right? But when it comes to the daily Christian experience, it will be different. As your phrases are different, your DNAs are different, so also will be the dealings of the Spirit. 
Somebody will say he woke me up in the middle of the morning. And then in the middle of the night. And then he told me. And I had him. I said, ah, you had him. Yoruba or English. He said he spoke to me. And somebody else says, I perceive. I perceive there was a strong witness in my heart. And listen to this. All of those things are valid. The dealings are different. The dealings of the spirit are different. But can the person of the spirit change because his dealings are different? No. So what not teach his person? Who is this person? That's what I want to teach today. He said, you know him. That's what Jesus said. You didn't make it, he didn't make it look like a choice. He said, you know him. You must know the spirit. Your knowledge of the spirit will determine your ascension in the kingdom. Your knowledge of the spirit will determine your ascension in this kingdom. So can I, first of all, like I always do, do uh, can I begin to tell you about the person of the Holy Spirit uh, by teaching you about who the person of the Holy Spirit is not? So we're going to start from who he is not. People think that's it, but this, that's not what it is. Number one, the Holy Spirit is not spiritual gift. The Holy Spirit is not the spiritual gift. I mention this because of the abuse of the gift of the Spirit in our days. Listen, can I say to somebody, the Holy Spirit is not tongues. The Holy Spirit is not tongues. And they make many, all those language, all the prayer language you've got from heaven, they are good, they are nice, but that's not the Holy Spirit. My expression, my, cannot, the, a person cannot be a language. A person cannot be a language because a language is inanimate. You can't see it. You can't touch it. It's not real. What the person of the Holy Spirit is. It's not tongues. Tongues are a gift of the Spirit. They are not the characteristics or essence of the Holy Spirit. They are gifts of the Spirit. It baptizes us. Prophecy is a gift of the Spirit. But prophecy is not the Holy Spirit. It's an healing. is a gift that the Spirit gives. But healing is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts. The gifts are not him. I can give you a gift of a wristwatch and you keep wearing the wristwatch, but the wristwatch is not me. So that when people behave in the way that scripture says they should not behave, and then they leave the place of sin, and then they say, oh, we should go I still have it. After sleeping with another, man, another, another woman's daughter, I still have it. All people have now come to a time where we have deified tongues. We have made tongues the God. So that in churches or houses where tongues are not loud, you say, God, the Holy Spirit is not here. The Holy Spirit is not moving here. Why? Because they are not loud. Can I say to you that the generals of old actually prayed and walked with the Holy Spirit and many of them never even prayed in tongues publicly. Some of them never even prayed in tongues at all. But they have the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, the Bible says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. He said, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one uh, there is given through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. The gift is given through the Spirit. But the gift is not the Spirit. Help me look at your neighbor, tap your neighbor, and say, The gift is not the Spirit. Does he look like the person believe? Say it again louder this time. It is inconsistent with the truth of scriptures to define the Holy Spirit solely by the gift he gives. It is inconsistent with that truth. It's inconsistent. I've seen times where people, can't you hear his tongues? That man is anointed. Please. What kind of carnality is that? Number two, the Holy Spirit is not demonstration and power. The Holy Spirit is not what? It's not demonstration and power. First Corinthians chapter 2, 4 to 5. He said, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. But he said, in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. It will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He said, my speech did not come to you in persuasive words of human wisdom. He said, but it came in demonstration. So that the gospel can be full of demonstration. Have you been in a place where there is demonstration of the Spirit? Speak to me. 
And I want to know whether you know what I'm talking about. Demonstration of the Spirit. Where you just say one, two, three, four, and then everywhere scatter. Glory to God. You hear groanings, crying, shouting, screamings, demonstrations of the Spirit. That's what Paul was speaking about here. He said, when I preached to you, it was not in persuasive words of human wisdom. He said, but in demonstration of the power and of the Spirit. And of the Spirit. But listen to this. Though there is demonstration, that is not what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is not demonstration. Today, we equal demonstration of the Spirit to the Holy Spirit. If I was told of a man of God, I went to preach in a place. And because he only preached the word, the truth of the word delivered people by the truth of the word. And then he left the place, no chair scatter, nobody on the ground crying, nobody groaning, nobody crying, but the word was preached simply and with authority. He left and the people said he was not anointed. And man, he's, not, he's not anointed. He's not powerful. He's not powerful. Why? He, he, they were saying he doesn't have the spirit. He doesn't have the spirit. He doesn't have the spirit. Why? Because the place was not scattered. You people left church. You came to church. You, you went the same way. Nobody was crying. Nobody. Your, your clothes is still the same. Are there times for that in the body of Christ and in meetings? Yes. But we can't have every service like that. Praise God. When we will do real teaching of the word. If every time you are groaning, crying, and smiling. Glory to God. And your character is not changing. Because it takes the word to change the character of people. It takes the word. It takes the word. You can be edified, consistently built up, praying in tongues. But until the word comes as a correctional tool, your life will not change. Your life will not change. We have, we, 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 you see, we, we, it's time. Again, it shows our level of carnality and sensationalism in the kingdom. The spirits can move without screamings and shoutings. Can I say that to somebody again? The spirit can move without shoutings and screamings. At certain times, I speak and I teach like this, and you get them, and the word will keep bringing your heart until you change. And you didn't fall down, you didn't cry when I was saying this. Why? Because the word itself is sharp and powerful. But what ensures that the word does what it's supposed to do in your life is the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the spirit of God, sorry. What ensures the word works is the spirit behind the word. Jesus said in 6, in the book of John, he said the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The literal translation says they are spirit and they give life. A life giving. Do you know that in Riyabonke Crusades, everything still remains calm. The man just keep, he can just keep preaching. Jesus is the way. You need to come to Jesus now. And people are healed all over the auditorium. Healed all over the auditorium. There's no time. Of, they don't do two hours of less of pressing in that crusade. You see, it is because we do not understand that some of these generals don't have to press in before power comes. Because they have a relationship with them. It's about your intimacy. They don't, they, don't, they don't need to build up the faith of the people by praying in tongues for hours. Healing take place. Why? Because Jesus and the Spirit is there. And wherever Jesus and the Spirit is, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Number three, there is only one Spirit. You know, there are denominations and churches that if you get baptized in the Spirit or you speak in tongues, but it's not from their church, they will tell you you need to be filled again. That what spirit you took was not the Holy Spirit. There's only one spirit. Divisions can make us enter into certain errors. Denominations can make us enter into certain errors. If you, there is only one spirit you can receive. And that's why some people have not received the person of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes even when they want to baptize, pray for them, they are afraid that will I not take a strange spirit. You can only take one spirit. His name is the Holy Spirit. It's either you have received him or you have not. It's either we have him or we don't. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and then verse 9. The Bible says, To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gift of healing by that one Spirit. One. There are no two Spirits. There are no two Spirits. Some people don't like some people's tongues. Have you, as you know, you know, there are, I'm sorry, but there are certain tongues that seem to be common to some denominations. Am I speaking your mind? No, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I, I, why are you like this in church? Let's, let's talk. You know there are tongues that seem to be certain, particularly to some denomination. When you hear it, you know where they are coming from sometimes. Uh, you know, you know. All right. So that you can then begin to say, ah, that, that's, not, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the Holy Ghost. Okay, so what did they receive? Is it you they received? Is it you they received? So, so, so I mean, we, we say a lot of things that are jargon sometimes. 
If as much as the person will lay hands on you, say, be baptized in the name of Jesus. Why? Because there's only one baptizer in the spirit. His name is Jesus. Oh, the man of God may lay hands on you, but he's not the one that baptizes you in the spirit. Ah, uh, no, he's very powerful. No, 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 no. He's jar of clay. He's jar of clay. Proper clay. Proper clay. Lucky clay. He's clay. Clay. Full time clay. You understand? So that if anything flows through him, it is not him. It is him that flows through him. Without the flowing, there will be no him. It is him that makes him powerful. Jesus is the baptizer in the spirit. So I will pray the Father that they will send you the cup. Jesus is the one who baptizes in the spirit. There's one spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and then verse 11. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. Difference in administration. Difference in demonstration. Difference in manifestation for the same. I've discovered many times when I preach and teach. I've discovered that especially when we move in the things of the spirit, people just begin to cry. I have cries a lot, plenty of cries when I'm preaching, when, I, when I'm moving in the power of the spirit. And, and these are peculiar anointings, peculiar anointings. Healings begin to take place. People are anointed into their offices uh, as working in the office of, of, of as working and being used, uh, given the gift of healing. And then you begin to see people say, oh, my hands are shaking. And all of that, there are peculiar manifestations, but it's still the same spirit. Can somebody say it's still the same spirit? I mean, tell your neighbor. He's not looking at you. All things being equal, he won't fall in love. All right? So, so tell that person it's still the same spirit. Some of you need to have preaching voice. Uh, say, say it's still the same spirit. Number four. Number four. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is not symbols. There are people that when they give birth to them from the womb, you know that they are going to be pastors. The way they sound. I don't use to sound like that, but I have somebody we call it MOG. Even if we greet you, say, good morning. How are you? I say, my God. You know, they say, well, my God, sound like my God. And it's different. My God. I see glory all over you. Uh, it's different from I see glory all over you. It's different. Uh -huh. You see, so, so, so the, the Holy Spirit, number four, is not symbols. In Luke chapter 3, verse 22, John chapter 1, verse 32, an event happened in the life of the Christ. He was baptized, and the Bible says, and the heaven over him was open. And the Bible says uh, that uh, there came an excellency of heaven, a sound from heaven that says, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. And the Bible also says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. That's uh, what in English? Uh, you, 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 you passed in school. Glory to God. That simile, right? So it is not it. Like is not the person. So that it is not until you have a symbol of dove that the Holy Spirit will be in your ministry. Are you following what I'm saying? I remember I told one guy, I said, Do, uh, get, get me a logo. Get me a logo. He said, I, you preach so much on fire. I said, yes. I said, he said and then the power of the Spirit flows when you preach. I said, yes. So when he returned the logo, I should not have said yes. When he returned the logo, there were fire burning everywhere. I said, hey! Hey! Glory to God! Listen to this. It is not, it's a symbol that describes, you see, in scriptures, there is something we'll call pictorial teachings. God will bring certain pictures, that images that you are used to in order to teach a spiritual truth. Right? It, it, the Holy Spirit is somebody you have not seen before. You don't know him. So God will bring something you are used to and you know, such as the oil. You know the oil. So it begins uh, by telling you certain characteristics about the oil that also describe the person of the Holy Spirit. Have you seen people you say, uh-uh, that one is just gentle as pap. Uh, gentle as pap. I mean, if you put anything in his mouth, you meet it there. It does not say anything. Right? Um, but that person is not pap. You see? <laughs> All right, so, so I'm just trying to say that we confuse a lot of things in our days. In order to teach a side of a person, God may emphasize a path, but it doesn't mean that's the Holy Spirit. You understand that? So stop carrying oil. God cannot be in a bottle. Do you follow what I'm saying? It's a characteristic of him. He assures and he agrees that you should anoint people with oil, but it does not mean that the Spirit cannot flow until you anoint people with oil. Glory to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
I annoyed with her, so it's not, I'm not saying anything controversial. I'm just trying to let you understand the truth of God's word. So tell me, tell your neighbor what other things, symbol in scriptures. That's how we know who we are in Sunday school. I have mentioned one to you now, right? I said oil. Oil, okay. So tell the one I've not. You see, that's the problem when you have all things on the screen. Can you see? Symbols of the Holy Spirit is not wind. So I said, wind is coming. Say, Holy Spirit, Wale. No, keep quiet. It was here before. We are trying to say when his power is manifested, it will look like a wind. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it's not that every time, this, this is how I know that spirit is with me. When I start feeling cold, I, 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 you go goosebumps, goosebumps everywhere. That's why I know the spirit is with me. You know, that's what we do. When I say, Father, my Lord, Krebo, yeah, 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 move amongst them now. Move. I say, ah, I'm feeling very cold. I'm feeling very cold. Oh, God. It's been there. It's not the feeling. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. You can know, you see, the things of the spirit can then become manifested to be felt. That's why people fall down. Go ahead and fall down. That's why we hold you. Because if you hit your head on the speaker, you will feel it. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why we hold you. So the things of the spirit can be manifested in the physical. We don't want you to fall down. I remember I, 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 one lady was coming. I said, now receive him. Now! And then, whoo, pow! The people wanted to catch. You know, we call them catchers. The catchers ran. But uh, the wind of the spirit was so great that uh, at the catcher, both the catcher and the courts, all of them were on the floor. She came to me afterwards and said, my head. <laughs> it was a tiles, tiles. You know, there are churches that tiles are tiles. Mm, I had it. You see, when I shouted and I had palm on the floor, even me, I rolled like this. Oh my God. <laughs> but I knew that nothing will happen to her. She said, somebody says, go and do it. I said, yes, let's go. But you see, that's why we catch people. Because the things of the spirit can be manifested in the physical. You can feel it. But it is not the feeling. Sometimes when you say that, open your eyes, don't close it. You will see that the wind of the fan is what is blowing. It's a rotating fan. So when it blows around, you know, when it goes away, you won't it. So like you, you will see that there's nothing. You open your eyes. Open your eyes. I'm not saying you, there are no times you just start feeling cold. That's the power of the wind. There are certain times you feel like water is coming, rising. I remember there was a day I was praying in my, in, in my house, uh, in Lori many years ago, and I was praying. And I started smelling that fire was burning. This is true life story. I started smelling that fire was burning. And I knew, like I knew my name, that I was a bachelor. I wasn't cooking nothing. I was cooking nada. But I, 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 was, I was smelling it. The fire was real because I was, I was praying for and the power of the spirit came so heavily that day. Listen, dear friends, uh, the things of the spirit uh, can be manifested in the physical, but that it's not until this manifestation that you can say the spirit is here. Am I helping somebody? Like a dove is not dove. Like fire is not fire. So that one is not until the man of God make everybody fall down and your head is on the floor. Your leg is like this. That's when the man is anointed. Some teachings will liberate you more than falling down. In fact, the liberation you need comes from teaching. The gospel must be taught. And then number five, the Holy Spirit is not an impersonal force or some type of inanimate power. Do you understand that? It's not a personal force. Faith is a force. It's called a force of faith. The Holy Spirit is a person. And this is what Jehovah Witness preach. I mean, this is what they teach. You know, many of you just say, I, we don't, I can't do Jehovah Witness. So, right? we are, they don't believe in the same thing. But if we ask you, what is different? You don't know. <laughs> you just know that you are taught that you do not carry bag. <laughs> you do not. But this, these are one of the fundamental differences that we share and that we have. This is one of the fundamental differences that we have and that we share. And, and, and what is it? You find this in scriptures. Uh, it, it is that this religion deny the individual personhood of the Christ. They deny the individual personhood of the of, of the Spirit. Sorry, I say of the Christ of the Spirit. They deny the deity of the Holy Spirit. They say, "Oh, only God is the Holy Spirit is not this. Uh, the Holy Spirit is just a force. It's an inter, it's a personal force. That's what they say. That's what they teach." Now, listen to this very carefully, please, dear friends. Listen to what I want to say very carefully. 
Acts chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. Um, Peter said, Ananias, you know, Ananias were robbery, robbers. In fact, they had fraud, fraud stars. You know, people fraud, people do fraud outside of church. But sometimes they do fraud inside the church too. You know, it's not every testimony I believe. That shocks me. Ah. It's not every testimony I believe. He said, ah, he's a man of God that prayed for me. <laughs> I, he's telling me I'm seeing blood in his mouth like this. He said, hey, you know, look, he's lying. Man of God, don't fall for that. He's lying. And he's supposed to make you feel you have power. But the man is lying. Or the woman is lying. I've been there. We've seen it again and again. Look at Ananias and Sapphira. Guys who had sold their own land. They, they, didn't, they didn't defraud people. They sold their own land and then they came to church. Uh, because maybe they were fighting for the position of Dick Kingwood. Or maybe Barnabas that had sold his own, there was a way the church respected him. You know? Church, church is full of men. If you bring money, there's a way they pray for you. It's, it's been a problem in spiritual things for a long time. I mean, what concern blessing people with, with food? Uh, you don't understand that. I will let you understand it. Jacob. Um, no, Isaac. Isaac wanted to bless his sons. Is that not what he wanted to do? He now said, go and find me venison so that my heart can bless you. What concerns me is concerns blessing. It's, you know, no, no, no. What concerns food concerns blessing. He says so that my soul can bless you. You know that's what he said? He says so that my soul can bless you. Leave your soul alone, sir. Don't bless me. Bless me. It's your spirit that even need to bless me. Bless me. But that tells you that there is something that comes when material is exchanged. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, they, somebody say it doesn't matter. If I give you, you are not a man of God, but if I give you today now, I give you 10 million in your account, and you wake up tomorrow morning, you will not bless me. You know what I said? You will not bless me. These people are what is called men of God, not God. That means they are men. So somebody came and drove a Lexus cruiser, a Lexus. LX570, Lord bless you, man of God. Brought LX570 into the house. I came out and I saw a 570. And he said, Lord, let's say I should give you. You will not. There are prayers, there are prayers. Am I speaking to somebody here? You see, when people talk on Twitter and say some of this rubbish, I say, you people put yourself in that situation. Put your, the man of God has been going around with a Camry 20, 2007. The engine is giving him issues. They now brought Land Cruiser. Ah, Land Cruiser. The man said, I, I never know. You will favor me. This. Kneel down. <laughs> I never I know. You will favor me. This. Kneel down. Ah, where should I start? He knows his blessing an evil man. But if also say, he knows that the man does not hear English. But he, 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 it is blessing from his soul. Some things, uh, you see, what you stalk at, especially if I call you now and you, you just got a job, you don't have clothes to wear, and I gave you five suits. Five suits. Salvato Veragamo. Five. You will bless me till you get home. You will bless me till you get to. Am I speaking your mind, sir? The next year, sir. The next year, you will be blessing me. Wow. That's what happened. You can provoke some things. Let nobody lie to you. You can provoke some things. The, the, the anointing is for sale. Rubbish. It is what they get. The man has been delivered from Camry. The man says, you not bless. What concern blessing? With food. Jacob said, Go and find anything. There are suyas you bribe people, not from Ajaunda Bridge. You will find the suya at Lekki Phase 1. People, suya empire. You bring it. Your mom will say, Ah! Ah. She's eating it. She's not praying. No. She's eating it. Say, ah! And I like this thing. You will never be stranded. She's just, she's just blessing you. Ah. Let me go back to this message. What Peter said, Ananias, that's the fraud people, right? They sold land. You know, Barnabas had, somebody had sold land before. Maybe he now saw that his chair changed in church. He now fed the both of them and said, ah, <laughs> my boss man must be a deacon in this church, in this assembly. Let's sell that land. But we will now, they can't get us. 
take half of it and take it to church. So that um, the remaining half, they ask us, we can still use the remaining half of some deals. So that's what they did. They just read the scripture like it was happening in Nigeria. Lagos boys. That's what they would do. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody says, those people that told you. You can know. I can always tell me that it's so land. Uh, 10 million at Lake Face 1. <laughs> and he brought it to church. I mean, that doesn't. If we start going to you won't do that. They have kept something. So the man knew. So why would you lie to the Holy Spirit? Now, listen, this is my point. Can you lie to somebody to something that is not real? If it is a force, like they say, can you lie to your television? Is somebody following me? You can only lie to a person. It means that you can only lie to somebody that can be deceived. To a thing that can be deceived. You can't deceive your car. You can't deceive something that is inanimate. You can't, you can't deceive faith. You can only deceive a person. And the scripture says, why is it that they have chosen in their hearts to lie, not to Peter, but to the Holy Spirit? It's a person. It's a person. I'll give you another scripture for that. Matthew 12, 31 to 32. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blaspheming will be forgiven men. But the blaspheming against the Holy Spirit will not be, what? Will not be forgiven. Blasphemy. The word he used there was the word therefore. That's where it started from. That means what I'm going to say now is, is explaining what I have said before. So to understand the context, you must have read what he has said before. And in the former verses, we saw that Jesus was talking about how people appropriate the power of God to the devil. So that's the context. So the lie against the Holy Spirit is actually appropriating the power of the Spirit to the power of the devil. That's what it means. And Jesus was saying that you, you, he said, but every blaspheming against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Against who? Can you commit blasphemy against somebody who is not real? Against somebody who is not a person? So the Holy Spirit is a person. It's important we know these things because if he's a person, then the way we relate with him will be different. It's not just a force. Help me look at your neighbor and say the Holy Spirit is not just a force. Even your word does not have force. Say it again. Number, four, number six now, the Holy Spirit is not non-existent or non-active. It's not a docile being. He's walking. He's the eternal spirit of God. He walks with you. He's active. He's present in everyday life. If not all of these, all right, so I've been said of all of that. If I have busted your bubble by saying the Holy Spirit is not tongues, it's not wind, then the question that should come to your mind and the question that should answer by itself, that should follow naturally, is who then is the Holy Spirit? Number one, who then is the Holy Spirit? Number one, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not like God. He's not substandard God. Or what you can call junior God. Or God Junior. <laughs> you know when you... <clears throat> you know, um, if I have a son now, I can decide to name it Fisayo Junior. Right? Like Kenneth Higgins Junior. Uh, when we were growing up, there were a lot of juniors. I'm, I'm not sure if we do that again now. Uh, because uh, again, again, Pentecostals came and said, when you call your son Junior, it means that you are saying that his son, his life cannot be better than your whole. Mm. You no, know, there's a way we share revelations that are very deep. Sensible, but doesn't have scriptural basis. But because it's sensible, we say, oh, oh. <laughs> so you are not calling your son junior. You are just going to call him. Oh, I even want somebody to say he's not junior, he's senior. You know when you call your son, you say, I don't call him that, he's senior. <laughs> you tell some people, please go downstairs. I won't go down. I won't go down. I'm going up in Jesus' name. <laughs> You're having a conversation. What, what's this? What's that? Yeah. Yes, are you the last person on the line? You, you got that. Are you the last person on the line? No, God forbid I'm not the last person. I'm the head and not the tail. But somebody must be the last person on the line. Everything is not to be turned to a spiritual jargon. That's why some things, they don't respect us anymore. We'll just make a mockery of everything. A mockery of everything. So because you're the last person on the line, mean you are the last. No, no, think about that. A line that you are in the bank or a line in the POS. So it means that you are going to be the last in life. 
people see a rational. It's not rational. Bad rationality at all. You see what I'm talking about here? So it's not junior God. <laughs> that word junior God means a lot. Second Corinthians 3, 17. Second Corinthians 3, 17. What did the Bible say? Read, let's read that together. One, two, three, go. Now, who is spirit? Now, the S you see there, I told you, you see, when you are reading the New Testament, and you see the word spirit, uh, this is how you will know whether it's talking about your human spirit or the Holy Spirit. When it is the human spirit that Paul or any writer is talking about, you will see the letter small s. But when you see the word capital S, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. So see that. Say, now the Lord is the Spirit. He didn't say, now the Lord is as the Spirit. He said, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Ephesians 4.30. Let's see that together. Ephesians 4.30. Now, the Bible says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of what? Of Lekki. You know, I told you there are not two Holy Spirit. You know, say, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of our church. <laughs> the Holy Spirit of God. Of God, of God is the same spirit. Is the same spirit. John four twenty four. Have you read John four twenty four before? Now the Lord is spirit. He said it clearly. Now the Lord is spirit. Now the Lord is spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him well. God is spirit. God is spirit. You remember Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse fourteen? You don't know it. Jesus said, Corinthians 30, 40. I can swear with my last dollar that you know it. I can swear with my last dollar that you know it. Do you know it? You know it. I told you from children and church, you have been, even in primary school, for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, but you don't know where it is. Now, rule it down. Join this with the verses you know, like John, uh, John 3, 16. No, join this one with it. <laughs> you see? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. That's where we get Trinity from. Can you see that? The communion, the koinonia, even of the Spirit. Just like you are triune in nature, the, the Lord our God is also triune in nature. If I may ask you, uh, if I may ask you, Delight, can you come upstairs? I know you are lighting, I, I can see you writing, but come, come, don't worry. Are you shy? Uh, you can't be shy. Glory be to God. Amen. So, you understand that basic thing we used to say, that the light is, um, so the light is, um, this is the light container. I can hit the container. This is the container, right? This is the light container. This is the light body, right? The light also has a soul, the mind, the seat of his emotion. The soul is inside there, right? But the true delight, the one that does not die, that goes to eternity of air, fire, or heaven, is the spirit. The, that's the core of him. That's the main delight. Right? And many times the light goes to the gym. I just think it's the time to also preach this. You don't like gym. Okay. Just assume that you go to the gym. But you, okay, you don't like gym, but you like food. Aha, yeah. uh -huh, beautiful. <laughs> is that what he said? That? Now, in maintaining the body, the light eats food. Right? But so, you can see the light now. And some ladies can say, I love that guy. I mean, let's not put any ink in. This man, pass mark, right? Why are you smiling? <laughs> ah. It's handsome, right? See, see, see this in church, eh? Lola. I built, I know she with all her. Oshé, thank you. Now, so, so you look at him and say, wow. I can say yes to him. I can say yes to him. I'm, for, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But you know what? He split it. It's not even quite shock It may not be existent. It might be on ICU. And he has seven packs. And the spirit is ICU. He's in the within wardrobe. He was just trying. His mommy is praying every day. Oh Lord, God help me. And this one will not die without knowing you. You see, he's in, he's in trauma center. The spirit is almost gone. You understand that? And a man. Will not look at a woman and say, 
I love her, Maria. Uh, who you are marrying is the body. When the body slaps you one day because it can't regulate it, the hand can just go like, Pastor, why did you? I said, Why, why, did I, why did you slap me? I said, I didn't know. Man, we're up. I don't, I just thought I was because there was no spirit to do the controlling. You understand that? And then he also asked what is called a soul. Can I ask you a very simple question because I want to bring a truth to you. When is it that the light soul was formed? Okay, when was it that the light soul was formed? If the light, for instance, was 25 years old, how old is the light's mind? 25. That's just basic truth. Forget, I'm not doing psychology on you, right? So I'm not asking you deep questions. I'm just saying truth. Like, you can say the mind of a child is going through, is going to be formed. I mean, science says that, in fact, this, this, will, be, this will make some of you very, that the child's brain is not fully developed until the age of 28. Yes. yes. A person's brain is not fully, so you can see that some people are marrying as babies. <laughs> you, you, see, you see that? So because the brain is still going through development and the guy, the woman is already becoming a ot- 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 pregnant. So you can see that a baby is going to be murdering a baby. But that's not that one. That's it. Let's leave that one. Just now I'm saying. <laughs> so you, you get what we're trying to say now is that the light has a soul, it has a spirit, and it's a body. God, the Holy Spirit was not formed. And the Holy Spirit is not new. It's not New Testament that the Holy Spirit now came to be. The Holy Spirit had been since God had been. Jesus had been since God had been. That's the truth I'm trying to bring to you. Do you understand that? Have you received man of God? Number two, he wasn't created and he has been around from the very beginning. I think I, I, think I just proved that to you also right now. So I don't have to stay so long in that. Just as God wasn't created being, the Holy Spirit was not a created being. Genesis 1, 2, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord overs upon the waters. That's where we get the word. He's brooding over every darkness. He's causing light. You see, that verse of scripture, where that is from, is Genesis 1, 2. Right. Okay, let's move on here. Number three is in charge of this age. The Holy Spirit is in charge of this dispensation. Jesus said it's important that I go so that I can pray the Father that they will send you a comforter. Without the gift of the Christ, there can't be the gift of the Holy Spirit. It was him that went to the throne room and said, Father, Father, send them an helper. That's why I know that Jesus' prayers are answered. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came. He said, I will pray the Father that they will send you another comforter. He who is the spirit of truth, who will abide with you eternally, forever. Now, I want to bring home another truth for you and for you. Jesus is such an amazing being. Thank God for Christ. Thank God for Christ. But can I bring home a truth for you? Imagine Jesus was still alive. Many of us dream that we were alive when Jesus was alive. Right? Can I? Have you ever read scripture and say, I wish I was there? Raise your hand if you have ever thought of being alive when Jesus was alive, physically. Or you know you will not have seen him. Try and see Baba Deboe. Try and just, I want to have an appointment with Bishop Boedeko. Try. Somebody was trying to bring my father in the Lord for, an, for, for a meeting. And the evangel told, told me to tell him that the calendar was filled for four years. So he had to wait for four years to be able to host a meeting in his church for him because it's not that I don't want to come, right? But every weekend, every weekday, he's booked for the next four years. Don't say, you see me now, enjoy me now. I'm just telling you, I'm telling you down. <laughs> I'm telling you down. So, for four years, he said, you can't, do, I, I, I can't make it. He said, Sire, come and see. So, for four years, he was booked. Now, if Jesus was alive physically, if a man of God can be that booked, do you not think that some of people will die waiting on the line? So what Jesus did, in fact, where will he be staying? If Nigerians, if it's not in Africa like this, ah, 
I don't know how Nigerians will see him because I'm sure that that country they will be denying us visa. Where Jesus was staying, they will be denying us visa. I'm telling you. If, just imagine, I, I read the statistics of how many Nigerians are denied U.S. visas on a regular basis, right? And I'm wondering if Jesus was staying in the U.S. I don't, I don't, I, in fact, because he's there, they will be denying us. Because they know that we are religious people, they won't let us come. They won't let us come. You see, when they say Jesus wants to have a global meeting, virtually, your network will be down. Because everybody wants to connect because Jesus is here. You know what Jesus did? Romans chapter 8. The Bible says what Jesus did. Romans 8, 9, Romans 8, 11. What he did was that he converted what that cancer would have been in his person. He gave us his spirit so that all of us can have that essence. It's the reason the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ. So that I don't have to go to the U.S. being in be, be Ohio waiting for the Lord. You can be in your room and it will look like you are with the Christ. Do you see what we are saying? But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, is none of it. The spirit of Christ. Do you have the spirit of Christ? Raise your hand and just celebrate that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallel and that's why we tell people that without your pastors, you can make some decisions. Right? Because you have the spirit of Christ. He's in charge. God who has sundry times, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, has spoken, spoken to the fathers via the instrumentality of the prophets, as in these days chosen to speak to us through his son. But that was when the son was alive. Right now, he's speaking through the spirit of his son, the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. You don't know that song? The Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings, is the Holy Ghost. Changing everything in obedience to Christ. Is realigning everything. In obedience to Christ. The Holy Spirit will never lead you in disobedience to Christ. The Holy Spirit will never lead you in disobedience to the world. I remember many years ago, a lady came to me. I was believing God for me as a husband. That's awesome, right? Very awesome. The danger of not being ugly. There are bodies of not being ugly. I hope you know. There are burdens. Let's call it burdens, you know, spirituality. Burdens of not being ugly. And then you carry fire. Amen. <laughs> and uh, they, so uh, she went to a pastor and was saying that. And then she entered my Facebook and DM'd me and said, God told her that I was a husband. So I, I, I needed to inform her that I got married seven years before that time. And that if she goes through my feed, she would have seen my wife and my children. I don't. I make it very public. I I thought that would stop her, but she said she knew what she had. So I went to a man of God and I said, "This woman is running mad." The spirit again will not ask you to do anything. That is against scriptures. He won't ask you. I had a voice saying to me, add two zeros to that. This is your opportunity. Add two zeros to that. Zemeno samba kiri yada and be, be, be. Shemele That's not the Holy Spirit. That's your spirit. That's your spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? That's not the spirit of the ancient one. That is your, the carnal spirit inside of you. Do you see that? A lot of corruption in our days. And people will tell you, I had God say to me. And when they say it, I used to be afraid. I had God say to me, to do this. <laughs> a man slapped his wife. So a committee went from the church. What happened? He said, I had the Lord said, this must stop. 
<laughs> I said, they asked him, what must stop? He said, I'm talking. She talks too much. <laughs> and so she for, he formatted it. He formatted it. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I don't know who else I've been lied against like the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> a man and a wife. So the man, it's not supposed to be a man and a wife. A husband and his wife. They always fight. Always, always fight. Like mad. So, the guy will go to the wife and say, the Holy Spirit tells me, told me today that one of our problems is that you are proud. The Holy Spirit told me. So, the, the wife now was speaking to me and said, I have a question. I said, I said the Holy Spirit always revealed my life to my husband. But never reveals his life to him. You see, it is not the Holy Spirit when you are trying to when you have become the DSS. It, that's, you, you have become witch, it's witchcraft. It's, it's, it's witchcraft. It's manipulation. It's witchcraft. That's not the Holy Spirit. You are trying to change your wife. You are not ready to change yourself. The man that was speaking. If there is a thing they say I used to describe pride. I would have said, let's not describe, let's just bring this guy to the front. Like, that's what Jesus was saying, that leave the, log, leave the speck in your brother's eyes. Remove that log in your eyes. He said, then you will be able to see clearly. Because that log is what is stopping you from progressing. So I'm asking you to have a walk with the Holy Spirit so that you cannot, so it's not that you cannot correct your company. That my boss is not, he's not inspired of the Spirit. If he wasn't, we will not make some decisions with if you see what God was saying, no, hear him for you. Hear him for you. Let him change your life first. You will not even have to tell people. They will come to you and say, what are you doing different? What are you doing different? Who is the Holy Spirit? Is the omni sign, omni present, and it cannot depart from you. This is one of the things I learned about the Spirit. Even when I did not have so much understanding. I told you that story before I was praying for somebody, and I got so tired. Uh, because I had, I, had, I had the spirit telling me pray for that person. I had that invocation. I, I was just praying for hours. The body would not leave. That's the proper word. The body would not leave. And then I remember telling the Holy Ghost. I was a 200 level student at University of Illinois. Um, and I was living in a house they used to describe as the cabinet house. Right? So I, I was, and the spirit came. Even though the house was ugly, the spirit still came. Glory to God. And it was insisting that I pray for somebody. After some hours, I was tired of praying. And I said, Holy Spirit, now, you see, this dumb man that you are saying is in error, is in, is in danger. You will now leave me and go to that person. For me, I'm about to stand up. I am tired. And then I heard him say, I can never leave you. You can only send angels like that. You see, I didn't even ask whether it was proper. I was tired. I said, now let angels go and tell him that he's in body. And so I, not, I just stood up. I said, let angels go. It was later when I was reading scriptures and I found out that Jesus said, in the spirit of truth, who shall abide with you forever? When you hear people teach doctrines and say you can't lose your salvation, it's from this truth they are teaching from. That the Holy Spirit is inside of you. It's never a time where it will depart from you. He's the one who sticks closer than a brother. His name is the Spirit of God. And he's with you. John 14, 16, he said that. Angels can come and they can go. But the Holy Ghost abides with you forever. He's the sweet presence. Whether you're in the fire, whether you are traveling, he's with you. Amen. And then number five, he dwells inside every believer. He's not just inside the celestial few. He's inside every believer. It doesn't matter really who they have or what they have done or what they haven't done. The Holy Spirit is inside of every believer. He's inside of you. He's dwelling inside many in a residual state. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, 6, 19. Say, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So it's not like the Ark of the Covenant. You remember the Ark of the Covenant? How many of us remember the Ark of the Covenant? That story about people taking the Ark to the house of Dagon. And then they took the Ark to the, ark of the, the house of Dagon. And Dagon began to do WrestleMania. He first of all fell. And then they helped him to stand very well. And then his tussles broke down. And then he was destroyed. Why? Because the Ark of God that represents the presence of God was in the house of Dagon. You represent today the house of God. You understand that? 
Is that understanding that changes everything? They are not fighting you. Anybody that points at that, you say, because they, they put a, they say some people say, hey, oh, he has a ruka, he has all this um, ring of evil, and they all point it at you. It's not you he's pointing at, he's pointing at the temple of God. You see how deep that is? He's not fighting, he's fighting the temple of God. Because you are the temple of God. And that also means, I was telling some folk last week, that also means ritually and talks to us about holiness. Right? If you are the temple of God, amen. 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 Let me teach this in a way that will be awesome. I don't want you to sin one day again in your life. Come, please. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And then Selim, come. You are not singing, you are teaching. So come. So, who came now? According to what I'm teaching. Eh? Selim came, right? But where is the Holy Spirit? Inside you. Uh, there's something called the principle of interpenetration in theology. It doesn't mean that when you open that up, you find the Holy Spirit and bring him out. So, I just needed you to know that, right? Where is the temple of the Lord? Inside him. So, wherever he goes, does he have to pray for the Holy Spirit to go with him? Answer me. So, the Spirit of Christ goes with him. Is that what you're saying? Because he has become what you call a moving temple. Is that true? Is that right? So that if he prays also, the Holy Spirit is inside of him. Is that right? I'm going somewhere. I'm not... I'm, so, so just follow me. All right. So if both of them are therefore in a relationship, glory be to God, uh, two temples of the Lord are in a relationship. Is that not so? So they are supposed to be holy. Is that not true? Okay, so... If they now begin... You know, I want to say something crazy. That's why I'm it's stalling, Abby. Aha. Uh -huh. Right? So if they now begin to kiss one another... Move close, move close. I won't, you won't kiss now. <laughs> what, what will you say you are doing? <laughs> All right, so, so both of them now dating one another and then they now begin to kiss one another, do stuff, become very intimate for the purpose of the under 18 here. Become very intimate themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? So you know that what goes on as that is that the temple and the temple. So Jesus, I mean the Spirit of Christ is your is looking like I mean do you get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> the, <laughs> do, you, do, do you see the spirit of Christ now is... So when people say that you can actually permit sin, you, if you understand you're a new creature, if it's that new creature that now makes this terrible. Because in those days, this presence was in, the, in Jerusalem, right? So we can quickly do things in Galilee. In as much as we are not in Jerusalem, we just carry goats and go to Galilee and go and say, ah, we have done things. Do you also know this will shock you? that there is no sacrifice for fornication and adultery in the Old Testament. Should I also give you one million dollars? You know, I, 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 <laughs> so I can give you another challenge. But there is no the scriptures. There's no sacrifice. God does not just expect it from his people. Because it's this temple. It's his body. You know the sacrifice for that in the, in the Old Testament? You are supposed to be stoned. It's death. No sacrifice. It's death. You're supposed to be stoned. That is a temple. Oh. Imagine them now saying, look at Phineas. They went and sacrificed a strange fire. Strange as it that it was not commanded of the Lord. That's strange. That it was not commanded of the Lord. Are you following this teaching? Now, Imagine that temple that people only go in. I'm teaching living close to God in midweek service. You should follow that series. Now, listen. So, you as a person goes to the temple and you cannot enter the temple. Do you understand what I'm saying? You go to the temple and you can't enter the temple because you stay in the outer place. That's where you stay. Only the high priest enters into what is called the temple. Enters into the core, the inner, the holy of holies. And he also cannot even enter every day. 
He enters once a year. And not without sacrifice. So he goes and enters into the presence behind the veil. Now listen. I want you to see what it means to be the temple of God. He enters into that inner core because that is where the Ark of the Covenant is, where the mercy seat covers. Because he can't go without mercy. Because no man can be pure to enter that kind of spot. Now, as the high priest enters, this is what will shock you, and this is the sermon. As the high priest enters, he does not enter without a chain. A chain will be chained to his legs. And the chain will be outside. So as he goes, and there are all those other things, on the edge and the end of his garment is what are called pomegranate bells. So that as he's walking around, the bells is making a sound. When we stop hearing the sound of the bell, about the cool inside the place, that means he had died in the presence. If we stop hearing the bells, he has died. And because he's dead, we can't go and carry him. You know what we'll do? That chain will help us to pull him out. That's how holy your God is. But now, God now said, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this separation. I'm tired of this. On the cross, the Bible says the veil, that thing that represented the inner space, was not cut from down. It was cut from up. It was cut from up, telling you that it was a God act. God divided the hidden wall of part, the wall of partition that separates him from us because he wanted a relationship with us. So now God is not in that temple. God now came into Selim and came into him. And they now decide that they can be his gracing God anyhow. Treating the temple anyhow. Because it is still not yours. Because the moment God comes in, then you have become a tenant in your own body. It's important how I use that temple. It's no longer my home because I've given in to him. Because that's why scripture says you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your own body. With your own body. Glorify God. Do you understand that? Don't worry, you're not in a relationship. Not to talk of kissing. Go and sit down everybody. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Do we get what we're saying here? Where is the Holy Spirit? So, uh, let me quickly lie. God will not hear. I've closed the door. He doesn't have to hear. He's already with you. Be careful how you live your life. Number six is a gentle, caring, and loving spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Therefore, he doesn't force himself on anyone. True, the Holy Spirit is a very gentle spirit. Yet, in manifestation and works, is extremely powerful. Powerful. And I love him when he acts like that. Because there is a way some sandalic sisters and brothers cacked up to church and then you preach and then they are looking at you. They won't even smile and all of that. And then when the power of the Lord breaks loose, you just hear them scream. Ah! And you say, oh God, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Why? I, I couldn't reach him. I couldn't reach her. But you did. One boy, we went to church together and we said, today we will not fall. We're in 200 level. And they had told us about the man that was coming. Such a powerful anointed man. And then when he began, he began, he said, I will now begin. Two people here will begin to speak in Chinese. We are the Lord. We are the Lord. And then I begin to hear, we are one here. And then everybody just started speaking. I said, what's going on here? What is going on here? I stood very well. I said, what is go- whatever is going on here, it's not my portion. And I looked at my brother. He was also an international equa boy. I mean, I was raised in Ibadan Equa, he was raised in Oshun Equa, so it was a combination of Equa. And I said, I look at him, my brother, I said, evangelicals, what is the meaning of this? I said, we'll pray in tongues. I said, let's continue praying in tongues. Vedo, Shabalia. And the man said, now seven people, God told me, he's touching seven people are fresh. And I look at my brother, I said, are you here? He said, I'm here. I said, stand where? And then I, he heard the pillar by, very close to us. This was Stadium Church. He heard the pillar very close. I stood, I stood, I said, and I hear, what? Come on, Jesus, do your work. Two. Come on, Jesus, do your work. Three. And then I have four. And then I have four. Where are you? The man was on the floor. He said, God, why did you disappoint me this way? I said, Pisayo, it's not going to happen to you. Last man started. I didn't fall. But have I fallen before? There was a day Reverend George was just walking. 
And he, and I was following him, catching people. And then suddenly he turned. Woo! I was a catcher. You are not supposed to lay hands on me. I was helping you. And they said, bring him up, bring him up. I had to bring him up, bring him up. It was cloudy everywhere. And then boom, and I went again. I said, ah. <laughs> the gentle spirit, but in works, he manifests himself in a very awesome way. Very awesome way. Steadily awesome. Disgraces people in a very good way. People will be crying, say, what happened to me? I say, I don't know. People come and report, I say, ah, what happened? I remember I go, I, one girl, I thank God she's not in this church today. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> I, I, I was having that meeting, singing, glory to God. There was such a move of God. And then we, people were slain in the spirit. I knew how to close the service. So I said, if you can go, you can begin to go. Choir keeps singing. And they kept singing. And she fell down. And then we were waiting for her two hours, one hour. You eat her like this. And then she was gone. Totally finished. I said, ah, Holy Spirit, peace. You know, we used to minister peace, peace, peace. Ah. The more you call the name peace, the more it seems like it's a prophetic word. She was just gone. Dead wood. So, dead. The only thing I knew she was living was that she was breathing. But she was gone. Woman here. Not all these fake, fake ones. You go buy two, two thousand or something. Expensive. You know that this girl oh, is too, 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 too. She wasn't supposed to fall down. The perfume was still smelling like the presence of God. You understand? But she was done. So that day, after the while, I said to us, I said, See, I'm going home. So we're going home. The person who wanted to off the jet is this one now. So let's go. So we took her in the car. I took her in my car. And I carried her to a hostel. I was asking myself, beside her, if they even say you have killed this girl now, or you have raped this girl now, what will we see now? Because she can't even see anything. It's like we have used her. I just come to dump her like a old boys inside the school. I'm telling you. The security people say, ah. What in law? They want to drop her. They have used her. Oh. Uh, what will you say now? I'll say my ID card. And she can't even answer. Because she was still dead. Gone. So I called her friends. That one came, you know. <laughs> you must have friends that understand spiritual things. This one has no understanding. After say, what did you do to her? Say, ah. Is that maybe she told you she was coming to church? <laughs> and so, but I was not afraid. You know why? I was with my wife. I ah, know that kind of thing. You can't be alone. If if I was alone, I would carry her home. She would wake up in my house. That's all. And then we took her. And then they came and they said, and I said, come. I explained to her. I said, is there anybody who has sense, spiritual sense? He always there. She went and called one person. I said, you know, the spirit of the Lord moving, moving. She went down. She has not woken up since that time. That's where we have. It's okay. How do you take her to this? They said. So they took her, parked her by the side, and moved her. And they told the wardens that so she they say, ah, she's sick, she'll be fine. It's okay. They shall took her to her room. When I called her the next morning and I asked her, what time did you woke up to life? Say 5 a.m. 5 a.m. I came back to life. And she was still talking. Say, how did I get to you? He said, What happened? I said, I'm asking you to what happened? What did you see? Where did you go? The Holy Spirit. With full makeup. The Holy Spirit. The full makeup. There are people in this church, they don't like to hug me. They don't like it. So. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Number seven is the empowerment for every work. The Holy Spirit is the empowerment for every work. And then number eight, I just want to close now. The Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, say unto Zechariah, No, my power, not mine, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit, number eight, is the one who helps in building up a believer. If the believer is going to grow, he will need to know how to walk in the Spirit and listen to the Holy Ghost. Jude one twenty. believers, pray, build up yourself. That's the word edification. Edify yourself. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 
2, 22, Ephesians, John 14, 26, write that down. And then number nine, he's our legal spiritual evidence of adoption. I love that. If you love the Christ, then you will know that he did not leave us barren. He gave us a legal evidence of adoption. Because I have the Holy Spirit, I know I'm a child of God. It's a proof. It's a proof that I will see Christ one day. It's a proof I'm going to see the Father one day. It's our legal evidence of adoption. When you adopt somebody, there is a certificate that is given to you to make it legal. What certificate has been given to us is the Holy Spirit to ensure that, that we know that we are not sons, even sons of God. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, we are supposed to be led by him. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Listen, dear friends, there's no other way to lead than the Holy Spirit. These are just foundational truth I'm sharing with you. Next week, I then begin to look at the leading one by one. I talk about dreams. Next Sunday, we're talking about dreams. What is the spiritual implication of dreams? How can I be led by dreams? To what extent can I trust my dreams? I, I told us last week, unfortunately, I'm not owing anybody $2 billion. But I told you to go find out where there is anybody that's led by dreams in the New Testament after the Holy Spirit has come. And I was prepared to pay the person $2 million. Unfortunately, nobody has come forward to claim it. Those who are trying to claim it, they don't know what they are claiming at all. But I'm going to deal with all of that next Sunday. I'm going to look at what does that mean. Uh, and I'm going to start by telling you how to appropriately understand scriptures and verses and what you should use as your Bible you are reading. I understand that. Don't be using TPT. I'm saying that's translation. TPT is not a translation. The message Bible is not a translation. Right? Um, and that's what many scholars have problem with TPT. It's not the passion translation. It's the passion paraphrase. It's not a translation. Uh, the message is not a translation. It's a paraphrase of the Bible, right? And I will tell you what those means um, next Sunday, right? So, uh, you are in this church where they teach the truth, where you will learn. You will get better. You will know God better. Hallelujah. But listen to this. The Lord leads. Uh, I just understand that the Lord leads. And the Spirit is very real. The Holy Spirit is very real. Can you bow your head by your hands? Stand, everybody. Stand, everybody. I want to do something in this house this day. All eyes closed. No moving around. Just look at the empty cross. It's a sign. See the empty grave. It's a sign that Jesus reigns forever. It's a sign. We can't find him in the grave. We can't find him on the cross. We can only find him on the right hand of majesty. And one of the fourth prayers Jesus said is that the Father will send even the Holy Spirit. Forty days, fifty days after he died. Fifty days after the Passover, Passover was the day of Pentecost. Fifty days after the Passover was the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost is the day that the Spirit came. After the day had come, fully come, the Spirit came. The Lord spoke to me many months ago and said to me in the month of May specifically that this place has become the upper room. And we're going to have an upper room experience. What you're going to do today is going to be very simple. You're just going to stay as you are and you're going to say the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm going to say that, that seven times, and then you are going to say, cleanse me, renew me, change me, I want to make it three, change me, 